I don't care what you provide him with, how beautiful that you are, and what treasure you think you represent. Too many fish in the sea. If you want to know, let me give you the statistics, sisters. This is another subject I'm going to talk to you about later on, but let me just tell you. Already in the Western world, there is 2.5 women to every man. Just add with me. If you take away the men who are homosexuals, now you come to what? 3.5, right? <laughs> no, this is the truth. Then if you take the men who want to be playboys, they don't want to get married. Now it's what? 4.5, isn't it? Then you take the men who are on drugs and alcohol. What do you get? 5.5. Because now we're talking about 2.5 women to every male, not men, male. So we had 2.5. We had 5.5 now. What about the men who's in the jail? They will not come out 10, 15 years. Now you got what? 6.5. What about the men who's at war? Maybe they will not come back. Where are we at now? We're at 7.5. What about the men who is confused? They don't know whether they want to be a male or female. <laughs> they don't know what they want to be. They're just floating around. Now you're at 8.5. What about the derelict men? They're bums. They're irresponsible. They're living and eating off their mother. They're 30 years old. What about them? Now you're at 9.5. So if all the women was able to marry a man for themselves, what would happen to all the other sisters? A man, we said. Who is a man? A man who is responsible. A man who can fulfill what she needs Physically, and, and mentally, psychologically, and economically. If all the women got a husband, what will all the other sisters do? Will they become lesbians? Or they become old maids all their life, rest of their life? No, there's a hikmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will talk about that hikmah. Sisters, be aware of deviation. Be aware of chauvinism. Be aware of personal interests. Be aware of rebellion. And on this issue of rebellion, sisters, let me say this to you. And let me be straightforward. And I hope that I don't become unpopular to you because of saying this to you. The sister who speaks against ta'addat zawjat, the sister who speaks against plural marriage, she says to people, I don't like it. It's not right. That part of Islam, I don't understand it, and it ain't for me. My husband better not. If he does, I will blah, 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 blah. And sister, don't take that from him. These brothers, is all they think about all the time is blah, 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 blah. This is not right. The sister who's talking like that, she is causing fitna, and she is deviating and undermining the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she is acting rebellious. And she's engaged in fisk. Now I didn't say that the Muslim sister should not be jealous. She is, she is right. Jealousy is a part of her nature. It's a part of her beauty. It's a part of her character. But she have to keep it in check and keep it in balance. The wives of the Prophet وسلم, they did not hold a party. They did not jump it down and clap when he took a wife. They did not. They didn't like it. And you know, in the Quran, we have an example where when he took a wife on one occasion, two of them uh, did what? They played a trick or conspire. I think this wife he took, was, her name was Sophia. And so two of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu told her, I, I'm not sure if it was Sophia or the other, another one, they said, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi come to your house, say, A'udhu Billah. So when the Prophet ﷺ came to her house, she said, A'udhu Billah. So the Prophet ﷺ, he left. He left her house. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the ayah of Quran, O Prophet ﷺ, do you turn away, that, turn away from that which Allah made lawful to you in order to please your wives? See how Allah sent the ayah. Do you turn away from that which Allah made lawful to you in order to please your wives? Now the Prophet, he understood something happened. Jibreel came and told him what happened. He's turning away from this sister 
in order to do what? To please his wives. He know that something happened. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advised those women, if all of you give problem to the Prophet sallallahu and back each other up to give him problems, maybe Allah will cause him to divorce all of you and do what? And give him better wives in place of you. So those women, they feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They loved the Prophet sallallahu They had their jealousy, but they feared Allah. And so what did they do? They made tawbah and they reformed themselves. So jealousy is a part of the woman's nature. The Prophet sallallahu said, the woman who is able to control her jealousy will receive the same reward as the man who controls his fear of jihad. It means that the woman that controls her jealousy regarding the issue of plural marriage. When her husband takes another wife, she's jealous and she should be. But if she controls this, Allah will give her the same reward as the man that is able to go to jihad and control his fear. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed jealousy upon the women and he has put jihad upon the men. So brothers, don't say to the sister, why are you jealous? What's your problem? What you think? She should not be jealous. She should be. It's her nature. But she need to control that. Because sisters, think to yourself, did Allah say, did the, did the Prophet say, none of you is truly believers until you love for your brother what you love for yourself? Did he say that? Did he say that? Yes, he said that. So let's switch it. Sisters, none of you truly believe until you love for your sister what you love for yourself. Now let's talk about that part. Let's go back to the issue, you understand me, of the 2.5 up to the 8.5. Let's go back to that. So if all the Muslim women in Sydney, Australia, let's not do talk about the whole world. If all the Muslim sisters of Sydney, Australia, Allah blessed them to have a husband. How many sisters there will be without husbands? There will be at least, for every one sister that will find a nice husband, there will be at least another six sisters they will not have a husband. So sister, ask yourself, subhanAllah, what do you think about that Muslim sister? What should she be? She should be a lesbian? She should be by herself? She should not have children? She should not have her desires fulfilled? She should not have a home? Somebody to take care of her? Because you want one husband for you and you don't want nobody else. I want mine for me, that's it. So what do you think the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, if you don't have the ability to give uh, uh, justice to the women, then do what? Marry women of your choice. Did he say? Huh? Ma taba lakum, didn't he? Mathna aw thulatha aw ruba. Did he say one in that, in that ayah? Did he say one? No, he said mathna, which means what? Two. Aw thulatha. Three, our roba. Four, he didn't say one in that because he already ordered us to have one. But in regard to the justice, he said, Masna, our thulatha, our roba. So the injustice is what? One of the injustices and the imbalance is what is evident in front of you. That if every sister have a husband.